Three and two versus three and two. Carolina versus Atlanta. The Panthers usually simulate really, really well. So I'm actually kind of surprised to see them at only three and two, despite their 81 overall. We are better on paper on offense. However, they have a slight edge defensively. We'll see what ends up happening, of course. Bryce Young leads the way. They still have Brian Burns, even though in real life, there's a lot of speculation that he, he may be traded. But the general manager of the Panthers, Scott Fitterer, declined multiple first round picks plus maybe even more to trade Brian Burns and that was not exactly good leverage for the Panthers in contract negotiations and the two sides have not been able to come together on a deal. Miles Sanders signed in the offseason in real life of course now his second year in Carolina in our franchise they have superstar development Von Bell Jeremy Chin, Derek Brown, Shaq Thompson, Taylor Moten, JC Horn you know some of the usual suspects nobody particularly new Although Zach Sealer is a new addition, but superstar dev for Bryce Young, of course, 23 years old, 80 overall, and his accuracy in the short and medium areas of the field, pretty good. Does well under pressure, obviously can move a little bit as well. So we might have our hands full today trying to deal with Bryce Young, but we do have a couple of breakout challenges. These are always pretty difficult, especially for the DBs. We'll see what these linebackers can do. And it's going to be Troy Anderson. While we've been trying to upgrade him from normal development for a while now, didn't happen in year one. But now, Troy Anderson's trying to put together a great performance from last game, even though I think the rookie Kyra Yankee out of Notre Dame really stole the show at defensive tackle. And Deshaun Humphreys, our outside linebacker out of Clemson, the rookie, plays really well as well. But Troy Anderson trying to get in the mix. What do you need to do, Troy? Hold the Panthers to 250 total yards or get Troy Anderson either one interception, force fumble, tackle for loss, or sack. Doesn't take much. But if we can get any of that, we're going to get a dev trade increase for Troy Anderson. That really doesn't appear that tough. We're going to make sure he's starting over to Sean Humphreys for this game. And then Richie Grant who I want to say already has star dev, made a couple of plays in the backfield last game. Now needs a couple more TFLs. It's going to be two plus interceptions, force fumbles, tackles for loss, or sacks. That's going to be tough. It's just really tough for DBs. We know they're not going to get interceptions. I feel like safeties don't do anything in Madden. Really important in real life because that's that last line of defense. You got to be able to tackle. You got to be able to run deep depending on whether you're in like a quarters, deep third, deep half, you got to be able to cover a tremendous amount of space, even especially single high center field type role. Not everyone, almost nobody can do that. Although Jesse Bates is one of those guys in real life that you like in that role. However, I know in Madden, he just he's not cutting it for us. People have said, oh, you got to trade him. I don't know how I can trade a player like this, right? He's just, he should be so good. It just hasn't worked out that way up to this point. I don't really think this is a player I can trade. I know I read the comments, unfortunately. You guys are always making fun of me. Ugh. <laughs> we got to get Jesse Bates with another ability here. Maybe film study? I don't know if that's going to be that good. Deep route KO? They never throw deep. Medium route? I, I don't know what to put on a safety. Like in, in Ultimate Team playing online... I feel like deep route KO is probably pretty good. They do not throw the ball down the field. Have you seen Jesse Bates try to make a play down the field? I haven't. Never seen it. I'll tell you, some of these players look pretty good already. Very interesting draft class that features a tight end inside the top six, a defensive tackle in the top five, just not really that typical of modern draft classes in Madden. In real life, absolutely. In Madden, doesn't really pop up so much. So it'll be interesting to see how good Felix Borden is. Deion Dobbins has a power move with B block should be tackling. This could be quite the draft class. And in fact, Deion Dobbins just looks quite a lot like Dante Boston from a year ago, also from LSU, also a very similar build. Deion Dobbins could be a name to watch out for as well. And if you remember, we don't just have our pick in this upcoming draft in 2025. We have the Minnesota Vikings draft pick, which is uh, currently 
projected to be number 22 overall. would like for them to start losing some games, but we will have some more ammunition to trade up if that's something we want to do. We have our first, Minnesota's first, and second, third, fourth, no fifth, or sixth, and then pretty much all of our picks for the rest of the draft, excluding a sixth in 2026. So we are in a pretty good spot right now for just everything. Need to keep it up, need to start winning more. Three and two is a fine record. It's not an amazing record, but it is fine. And we'll defend the short pass on Bryce Young, but I don't want a blitz counter. I don't really like how that makes our team play. I feel like usually you just only can throw the ball short. Otherwise, I don't know. It, it seems like you can't do anything. Hopefully the team stays pretty healthy uh, here through training. Don't really see any injuries on defense. And I feel like in season one, we had a lot of injuries in practice. And there's one. Leverett. Leverett. I have no idea who that is. Has somehow made the team and will not be playing today, which is not unusual for him. The fact that I don't even know his name means that we're probably not going to be missing much. Dealing with an injury at corner, Jeff Okuda, broken thumb last episode, is going to miss some time. But the big one is probably Cordero Patterson on offense. Plus three man coverage for AJ Terrell is great. That's now into the 90s. But yeah, big one on defense is Okuda. Big one on offense is Cordero Patterson. And really, the big one on special teams for Cordero Patterson. Although, without Cordero, we had a touchdown from Rashid Shahid last week against Chicago, which really, really helped us get that win. You know, maybe I'm wrong here, but it feels like this is the first time we've actually played at home in a number of weeks. It feels like we've really just been on the road most of the season, but we'll see if we can come back and win a game here at home. Could be a little bit easier as a result, get some of those home field advantage bonuses. And here is Bryce Young, nearly 1,200 yards, passing nine touchdowns, five interceptions. This is somebody that is capable of turning the football over. That is an interception per game on average. Then hopefully we can get one today. We also need to get Troy Anderson on the field as Caden Ellis will wrap up Miles Sanders who only gets three. That's what we need to do. Get Troy Anderson in. And if we eventually just get everyone near the line of scrimmage, we're going to get somebody shooting in to make the tackle for loss. And we just hope that it ends up being Troy Anderson as opposed to Caden Ellis or even Deshaun Humphreys if he's on the field. This is not going to take you know, like, it's not going to take Deshaun Humphreys completely out of the picture. It's just Troy Anderson's going to play a little bit more than him today. But even in, you know, if, if we had like a 4-3 even front, Deshaun Humphreys might be like lined up over here off of the edge of Frankie Louvu. So uh, it, it's we're still going to see all the same playmakers you're used to seeing. Just maybe a little bit more of Troy Anderson today. And we also have to be aware of the goal for Richie Grant. Need two TFLs or any combination of things. As Bryce Young flushed out of the pocket, we're actually going to send somebody after him. Bryce Young breaks a tackle and ends up getting the first down? Come on, dude. Got to be able to wrap up in space there. I mean, you got a 5'10 quarterback, maybe moving out there in space taking hits like that just shrugging them off like it's nothing annoying and we play that pretty well though look at that play grady jarrett completely stopping miles sanders in his tracks that's a nice tackle for loss to start now it wasn't troy anderson it wasn't richie grant but it was a nice play we're still looking to win games you know the development trait is just kind of the cherry on top of the sunday and there's another nice play this time jesse bates who has been good in run defense for us. There's, as I mentioned, just not the best in uh, pass coverage, which is just, it's a lot of man coverage for him, and they never throw deep. So he's got some tough assignments as they're going to throw deep. Terrell with the interception. You're trying to get it to Adam Thielen with AJ Terrell in coverage. Big mistake, and it's a big turnover for Bryce Young. He's going to keep that one interception per game average this season at least maybe even more to come down the road Adam Thielen's not going to be able to burn AJ Terrell Bryce Young kind of goes off his back foot a little bit tries to just bomb it in there rainbow 
just moonshot to Adam Thielen. Can't drop it in. And we're going to take over on offense. Desmond Ritter, B. John Robinson, and company. I want to keep the offense off the field. So that's going to mean quick scoring. Not punting, not three and outs, but quick scoring. So we have as many opportunities for the defense as we can to get those tackles for loss, sacks, interceptions, whatever. Troy Anderson, I think, will go up to star dev after this game. Richie Grant is going to be the tough one. We're going to start with the read option. Got to be aware of that. We're going to read Brian Burns. I thought he was just going to be too fast. I thought we had a better shot with Bijan despite reading Brian Burns playing down on the running back. I just thought we'd have a better chance to uh, run more with Bijan on that. But didn't end up happening. And I see Kyle Pitts. I don't think we can throw it in there. We're going to go backside for Drake London. Can't make the play. Well, right now we're staring at a potential three and out, which is exactly what I said I didn't want to do. And we're going to get it down to Bijan Robinson. We know he's going to make somebody miss. J.C. Horn, his latest victim. Shaq Thompson ends up making the play. But yeah, that's why I'm okay with checking down on third and long. Because it's Bijan Robinson. If we can get one-on-one -on -one against a corner like J.C. Horn, as good of a player as he is, it is a bad matchup one-on-one -on -one in the open field with Bijan Robinson. As Algier gets great blocks. Look at the outside. Look at DPJ. Tackle finally made by Von Bell. 17 yards for Tyler Algier. The blocking just does seem to be better for him. I don't know why it is. Like, some of it is just power run blocking. But, like, that inside zone, for example, is a play that we give to Bijan all the time. And it, it doesn't really end up working like that. I don't know if the defense changes their mindset when Tyler Algiers on the field as opposed to Bijan. But our, punt, our power run game might just get a little bit worse here. Chris Lindstrom, starting right guard, is injured on the play. He's going to be taken off the field at least for a little bit. And that could be a massive loss. Easily our best defensive lineman. And we are our offensive lineman. And we are sacked immediately. And Likai Fotu injured on the play. I believe he was the one that actually recorded the sack. He's going to go to the bench. Holding his chest. Working on his left arm. And it's just a shoulder strain for Lindstrom. I think we're going to err on the side of caution here on third and 18. And we're just going to go Jalen Mayfield in the game. Try to get into field goal range, probably. Now, they do have eight in the box, right? No, they have seven. They have seven, miscounted. Hmm. Do we want to run on this? It's going to be a tough call. I, I, I know that means, like, giving up and not getting a touchdown here no matter what. Pretty much, unless Bijan makes an incredible play. But I want to get into field goal range. I want to guarantee points. And there's Bijan. We, we just lost yards, so. Tried to juke out Shaq Thompson. Did not work. And uh, from our, uh, from their 43, we're going to have to punt. Very annoying. Hopefully it's a good one, because this is a, a terrible end to our first possession. Just awful. Although the punt from Pinion looks fantastic. Get down there, Clark. That is a great punt, as Pinion pinned them inside the five. Great punt from Bradley. And Bryce Young and the Panthers will have 95 yards to go if they want six or more. Oh, it's a run? Oh, no. I really thought that was play action. I don't know why it would be at that area of the field. But I read play action, and that left a gap wide open for Miles Sanders just to shoot through and uh, get them right back to as if it was a touchback. First and 10 now from the 20. Yeah, missed opportunity. Just got to read the run. There's Caden Ellis. Needed that to be Troy Anderson, but we'll take the TFL regardless. Player in motion for Carolina. It's going to be a run. And John Graves, the rookie at Obama, is not able to make the tackle. Kind of interesting to see him playing off ball there. But, you know, it does enough to slow down the ball carrier and set up third and somewhat long. Third and nine. I think we're in man coverage here on Sanders. And wide open is Terrace Marshall. Mike Hughes torched, and that's the problem with Jeff Okuda getting injured. Mike Hughes now has to play on the outside. He's been a good player in the slot for us. Not so much on the outside. Bryce Young takes complete advantage of the one-on-one. -on -one, hits Terrace Marshall down the field for a massive pickup. And Carolina now to the other 28 in an instant. 51 yards for Marshall. Not great. 
I don't know who we're supposed to cover. He's going to take a shot deep at AJ Terrell again. It went over him, and Marshall can't reel it in. Oh, my goodness. There were two wide-open checkdowns. Bryce Young wanted it all, threw down the field, nearly a touchdown. I don't know how AJ Terrell didn't get a hand on the ball. Uh, we, I, I feel like, really caught a break. And that ball is tipped into the air and nearly intercepted. That was the rookie Deshaun Humphreys that got a hand on it after the tip. But there's a reason he's playing linebacker. And not, you know, running back. Catching balls out of the backfield. Third and ten. How about an interception for Troy Anderson? I don't think we're going to get it. They're going deep. There's Jesse Bates. But has no chance to reel it in as that is way out of the back of the end zone. And Carolina will try a field goal. I think they're probably going to drill this. Eddie Pinheiro from the 35 makes this a 45-yard field goal kick up and good. Going to be 3-0 Carolina as they strike first. got to play better. I feel like our defense has actually played pretty well. We just gave up a 51-yard play. That's pretty much what it is. Uh, you know, they got in a field goal range, but we didn't allow a touchdown. I feel like our coverage mostly has been pretty good. I know the 51-yard play. I'm, I'm not, like, ignoring that, but I feel like otherwise. Yeah, other than the huge play, like, no kidding. No kidding, obviously. But I, I feel like, you know, most of the time they've played pretty well. Front seven, most of the time, has played pretty well. I just abandoned a, a, a run-fill lane with Troy Anderson trying to play play action and uh, let Miles Sanders go from the 5 to the 20. But it's okay. Long game. A lot of time left. We're going to find something. We're going to get it going. And it revolves probably mostly around number 7. Get Bijan the football any way we can. Oh, and already we're going to be under pressure. Brian Burns in pursuit. We're going to just take off with Desmond Ritter. He's got speed down the sideline, knocked out by Von Bell. We had an opportunity to throw the ball to a number of different receivers there. I'm totally aware. I feel like the safest decision was just taking off with Ritter, not risking throwing a pick, and getting to the second quarter still with possession of the football. Didn't want to fumble. We knew that we had an angle, just had to trust it, keep on going, and... You know what? We're in a better spot in the second quarter because of it on the 39. First and 10 now from the 39. Tried to cut back. The juke didn't register. Probably got a little bit too greedy there. Just needed to follow the actual lane with Bijan. It didn't look super open to the left side, to be honest to me. So that's why I tried to cut it back. Didn't end up working there. Second and 10. They're actually going to blitz. We're going to check it down. There's Drake London actually catching the football this time around. You know, I got some... Uh, some criticism last episode because, like, oh, you're complaining about drops and missed tackles when you've changed the sliders to make those happen more. It's like the catching slider is not really that low. And we don't really see many open field drops. Drake London just happened to have a huge one last game. But that's a thing that happens in the NFL. I'm really not upset about the rate that that's happening. But obviously, I'm going to complain about it when it happens because I don't want to see drops as the head coach. But as a curator of the series... These are things that happen, so I'm not mad about it, and I have every right to complain, and you have every right to shut your damn mouth if you don't like something. First and 10 from the 50, and we're getting blitzed. We're going to go out with Ritter here, and we're going to throw down the field for Kyle Pitts. It's a dart to Pitts, and we're inside the five. Desmond Ritter on the run, decided to give it a shot, and that's what happens. When you send pressure, you leave one-on-one -on -one matchups on the back end. And Kyle Pitts one-on-one -on -one against pretty much everyone is a complete mismatch. If you get a safety, they're not fast enough. Linebacker, not fast enough. Corner, not big enough. And first and goal now from the three. Looking to punch it in. And I'm kind of just looking to throw the ball to Drake London, who is absolutely wide open. We're going to throw it up to him, and he's going to find the end zone easily. This happens so often in Madden 24. I feel like you get on the goal line, and they bring in their corner, like, in the slot. So if they're in any type of goal line defense with, with you know, DBs on the field in zone coverage, they don't line up like they're in man, so there's no disguise at all. So then you have just a complete wide open player on the outside is my interpretation of what why of what and why that happened. Uh, super stupid, but we will take advantage of it. I'm not just going to not throw that when it's a guaranteed touchdown. That's what we need. Three minutes, 78 yards, seven points. That's going to be wide open. Yeah, that's Deshaun Humphreys in coverage. 
not really his game at this point. He's okay, but Hayden Hurst ends up getting open on him. And we we're just kind of focusing on those TFLs right now. Hopefully this is like inside zone or something. We're able to cut it off. It's not going to be. We're going to stay over the middle. And there's a nice catch for Jonathan Mingo. Falcons are moving the football. They're now on the 33. Not really doing a whole lot of running, although here's one. And this is going to be a nice play for him as well. Jesse Bates is there. AJ Terrell, I think, ends up getting the tackle. First down, Carolina. I don't know. I just feel like we have to blitz. That's how you get TFLs. And they're actually going to go ahead and change the protection here at the line. So are they going to try to take advantage of, of single coverage here? Young going to take off and scramble. And Richie Grant nearly with an interception. Richie. Bryce Young scrambling to his non-throwing side. Lobs up a prayer. And they were nearly answered by the devil. Richie Grant. And oh my goodness, bad stuff is happening. Big hit, Troy Anderson. I was just slow. I was doing a whole monologue there. I was, I was so too slow reacting to Tommy Tremble uh, on a shallow cross. So that's on me, but I, I can't believe Richie Grant just didn't get that takeaway. Here's a quick throw to the flat. Allen trying to take him out, but can't. And Chuba Hubbard now brings Carolina down to the one. Seeing a lot of backups getting rotated in here, which is nice. It's good to see more players, but... Got Troy Anderson back in the field to Sean Humphreys. Here's a run, and Miles Sanders leaps over Humphreys into the end zone. Carolina with their first touchdown of the game. They'll take the lead, 10-7, pending an extra point. Uh, just a really consistent drive from them. Really, really good stuff from Bryce Young and a number of these receivers. Uh, obviously, it would have been a little bit easier to stop them had I reacted earlier on that shallow cross to the tight end, Tommy Tremble, but... I'm mid-monologue, dude. What, are you going to stop Shakespeare actors when they're performing a play? I, I don't know if that's exactly the same thing, but you know what I'm saying. I, I was doing my thing, dude. Is, why are you going to snap the ball? Have a little respect. All right, this play's about to go crazy. It's going to be a little play-action rollout, a little bootleg here. And, man, how does Brian Burns take away everything I want to do? I wanted to throw the cross to Drake London. I wanted to throw to Madsen. And he was somehow in the perfect spot, both deep down the field, but short enough. It was just a perfect spot to kind of take away both of those. We end up having to just check it down. And obviously, instead of getting a first down, we're staring at third and two. And Bijan's going to get the give here. And we got to pick it up. Please block for him. One-on-one, -on -one, you got to be strong. Got to be powerful. And he gets the first down. Dante Jackson injured on the play which actually works to our benefit here. We don't have to call a timeout. It's like a second two-minute warning. So that's not the worst thing for us. And we're going to try this little play-action boot again, except a couple different routes on the field. And this time, we're going to throw to Kyle Pitts, who's wide open. And we missed it. Huh. Well, how? What happened there? <laughs> what, what happened there? I know it's going to be my fault somehow. I'm excited to find out as always. Play action. I see Espinoza. I see London. Pitch is wide open. Here's the pass. Rack catch. What the? What the? Did the ball go through his body? I mean, pretty much. Goes right through his hands, of course. That was my fault. And I think there's actually a... a, a like screenshot here we could grab of the ball pretty much it's not letting me stop it exactly where I want it to pretty much in his shoulder pad I'm, it's so like glitchy they don't they don't want me to show it they don't want me to get it but I'm telling you it went right through his body I'm hitting it so lightly it's overreacting. Please, dude, let me let me just grab it. It goes right through him. No, we, we know it. We don't have to see it. Whatever. I wanted the, like, the frozen image of the ball through his body. Couldn't get it. Second and ten doesn't matter. I mean, game's not great. Bijan's open. Throw it down the field. He's got to step on Burns! Bijan Robinson, what are you doing leaving an edge rusher in coverage? It is Brian Burns, though. I actually think that's fine. He's so athletic, moves so well in space. But for the sake of the video, what are you doing to mismatch? Bijan Robinson down the field. B 
beating Brian Burns in one-on-one -on -one coverage. And I see number five, Drake London, with nobody lined up on him in the slot. We're going to throw quickly to him. And there he goes. Drake London, broken tackle. He's inside the five. Big play for Atlanta, and he's doing curls. Yeah, you should, dude. Need stronger hands. Do some hand workouts after last episode with a couple of drops. Now first and goal from the three. 35 seconds to go here in half. Number one, Bijan with the carry. He is pretty much stonewalled. Maybe got a yard. Third and goal from the two. They're spreading everybody out. That means we're running the ball. There goes Bijan. Touchdown. That's sometimes why you line up with five wide. Or four wide. Or even trips to a side. Stretch out the field. Right? Get a bunch of DBs on there trying to cover these receivers. And then run the ball straight up the middle. If you can get them to take away linebackers. Get them off the field in short yardage spots. They are begging for you to run the football, and they just basically gave us the lead for free. 14 to 10 with 14 to play in the first half. I imagine this is going to half number two, and I'll show you my underdog picks for tonight's game. If you're watching this on Thursday, I'll show you what I'm picking for Thursday night football. If you're watching this on Friday, I'll show you some of what I have for Saturday for college football, if you're able to do that. And uh, of course, probably if I upload on Saturday or Friday, which I will. And I'll show you if I'm doing any underdog picks for Sunday's NFL slate as well. So stay on the lookout for that if you're interested. And I use code Bengal on Underdog Fantasy. You'll get a deposit match up to $100. So if you're into that sort of thing, and I don't blame you if you're not, but if you are, feel free to use that code. As Bryce Young takes a shot down the field for Thielen, our DBs are just kind of finding their way out of position. I'm surprised they're even trying to, you know, throw the football downfield here. We're going to have to change our defensive philosophy a little bit. As Young throws to the flat, just trying to increase his own stats. Selfish player, Bryce Young. Pretty even game so far. We really haven't been able to establish a big running game. And both teams have passed the ball fairly well. Kind of relying more so on big plays than anything else. And I'm kind of okay if that continues in the second half. I would like to establish the run a little bit more. But we'll see what happens. The rookie, Bowden, not having a great game against Buffalo. That's a tough environment to play in, though. And Seattle, I think, might have a rookie quarterback as well behind Geno Smith. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say they drafted... Here we go, second half. Our new strategy is to defend the medium pass. They weren't really throwing the ball short all that much. And Bryce Young was taking some chances down the field, which is pretty rare, I feel like, in Madden 24. And Madden, in general, lately, they just don't really take a ton of deep shots. But we are going to try and uh, take away what the, the Panthers were doing well. And we want to run the ball a little bit better here in this second half. And I think that's going to be a good way to do it. Bijan Robinson still on his feet. That's a nice gain. I felt like it could have been more. I think we all kind of felt like that could have been more. It was just tough because these guys are going to disengage from these blocks. I thought we did a decent enough job of following them. And not every play is going to be a home run play. Or in the case of this channel, not any play is going to be a home run play. First and 10. Kyle Pitts open. That's a bullet pass. I, I, I tapped the button for such a short amount of time. It's a millisecond. And they're like, bullet pass? Not what I wanted. I tap it for no time at all. And yet it's still... Yeah, throw it as hard as you can right at a linebacker. It's frustrating. I want to touch it in there. We're going to go down the field. Drake London. It's an overthrow, but that actually works for the best, I guess. I saw the slot fade as well. Um, thought we had a better chance with London. Maybe that wasn't true. Second and 10. Little tight end screen. Oh, I need DPJ to get a better block in there, dude. Now we have another injury on the offensive line. This time it's the other guard spot. Matthew Bergeron. Young man out of Syracuse injured on the play, although Chris Lindstrom's back. So we at least have our starting right guard, if not our starting left. Now we're going to have a rookie come into the game. So we're going to have to watch that spot. This is the rookie left guard. He was a mid-round pick, Riley Wheeler. So it's your chance. He's slightly higher overall than Matthew Bergeron, uh, with the boost at least. Very strong player, about the same agility, a little bit better acceleration. Uh, also a little bit younger, which means less experienced at this point. Not really a great pass blocker. 
Not really a great run blocker, but his impact blocking pretty good. He's very similar, in fact, to Matthew Bergeron. His lead blocking is a little bit better. So this is somebody we probably would prefer to run the ball behind, but on third and nine, we don't really have that luxury. And we're just going to check down to DPJ, see if we can't outrun somebody. Make it fourth and five. Not the result I wanted. Probably played it a little bit too conservative there as Riley Wheeler is going to stay in the game. But we're going to send out Young Wei Ku to make this a seven-point game. And I love that superstar ability that lets me know exactly where this ball is going to be kicked. Kick is up and good. 17-10. Not an awful drive. Not the result we wanted, obviously, but points is points. Points are points. We're going to be happy about them. Here's a run. I don't think we defended this well. That's a bad angle for me with Richie Grant. Jesse Bates going to have to do his thing here. He wrestles down Miles Sanders, but he's having a great game. And that obviously will only continue when you bust off big gains like that. 7.9 yards per carry now for Miles Sanders. I was just trying to focus on getting the right player there and knowing the assignment. We just got caught out. They're going downfield. Terrell get a hand up and he breaks up the pass intended for Jonathan Mingo. We've seen him get burned down the field lately. Did a good job of getting his hands there on the football and forcing the incompletion. That could have been bad. I don't know why teams are trying to take advantage of him. There's not really a whole lot to take advantage of there. Miles Sanders. I thought we had him in the backfield. A little rat makes a nice move and uh, evades Troy Anderson. But we got to play, you know, really, really fast to get these TFLs. We need one with Anderson. I don't know if Richie Grant is going to be capable of getting whatever he needs to do. But Troy Anderson, we can get star depth. I know we can. Man coverage against the tight end. If this is a run, we have to shoot that A-gap. That's where I'm aiming for. It's not a run. Get to the outside. Quick throw. Terrell in coverage again on Mingo with the breakup. Love that from AJ Terrell. I don't really like the edge here with Troy Anderson. I want to be able to, to make a play. And it's just going to be really tough to do that with edge responsibility. We end up making the play, but it's a two-yard gain. So it's not really especially helpful. On third and eight, this is it. I mean, it's going to be a pass, almost certainly. Can we get pass commit here? And maybe find a hole to rush through? There it is! Anderson got picked up! No! Terrell in coverage! Cannot make the play! Mingo finally gets him. Jonathan Mingo. He just ran past A.J. Terrell. I mean, I think we did the right thing. But Miles Sanders, with one of the greatest blitz pickups you will ever see from a running back. I thought we had a clear shot to Young. We we're going to make him feel old instantly. That's how hard we were going to hit him. We were going to hit him into his 50s. And Miles Sanders came out of nowhere like a guardian angel. And we'll see if Jonathan Mingo actually ended up getting two feet down. There's the right. The left may have dragged. Now, they're calling this possession review. And it's going to stand. I mean, I, I think that back foot dragged. It's weird that they would call that a review of possession. We know the ball doesn't bobble in Madden. But 17-17. Rip off a big one, Bijan. All right. Well... Don't do anything then. The offensive line, I mean, that's, you got a rookie in there, and the interior of their defensive line just crashed hard inside and made a nice play. Second and 15. We're going to cancel play action here. And I, I saw Kyle Pitts. I prefer the safety net of the rookie tight end out of Utah, Neil Madsen. I don't want to make the throw too complicated for Desmond Ritter. I don't want to risk. Sec or third and super long on second and long. So I'd, I prefer third and five. And we'll see if we can pick it up here. Already rolling out and throwing underneath for Kyle Pitts. Perfect. I know things could have been more open down the field. I want the guaranteed yardage. And I want to uh, live to die another day here. I say that pretty constantly because my thoughts on that are unchanged. I like to play it conservatively sometimes and just take what the defense gives us. And there's Bijan Robinson. Never a bad idea to get the football in his hands. That's the easiest gain a six you'll probably ever see. Second and four. This is deep shot down the sideline written all over it. Drake London down the field. Beat press. And there goes London. Drake London diving touchdown. Let's go finally. 
We win on the outside and we're actually able to get him the football. He beat Press easily and then it was off to the races. You get a big injury to a starting corner in Dante Jackson. We should be able to take advantage of that and that's exactly what we do to take the lead. Drake London actually catches the football. A nice change and it's 24-17. Really, really quick, nice drive. You know, we had, we had, like, to convert on third down a couple of times. That's never that easy. We had to make plays when we needed to make them. That kind of goes without saying, and I'll say it anyway, because I love to talk. But we'll take the lead, 24-17. Second and one, RPO. Oh, my goodness, no. No, 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 no. Misread that. Adam Thielen with a big play down the field. That's completely my mistake. I uh, didn't realize what I was switching on to, clearly, and we end up hit sticking the air, and we let Adam Thielen, the oldest player in the NFL, might as well be 50 years old, outrun my uh, secondary. Oh, huge hit from Bates. Uh, Bangla, actually, uh, Matt Prater's older, or whoever the oldest player in the NFL is right now. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm aware, I'm aware. Young under pressure, we'll just throw it away. That is the end of the third quarter. Panthers knocking on the door, looking to tie it up. This is going to be a very interesting fourth quarter. NFC South division on the line. A lot of season left, but whoever wins this game takes the lead. Whoever doesn't, going home disappointed. That's a mistake. Just got overzealous there, trying to take away Hayden Hurst. Miles Sanders now down to the one. Oh, it's play action. Nearly a touchdown. I mean, they had us fooled. We were playing the run. They had us dead to rights. And then it was uh, just a bad throw there from Young. Miscommunication with the receiver. Something had it. Something happened. Miles Sanders changed direction. Touchdown tie game. I got to get Troy Anderson off the line. That's not working. I don't know why that's happening. But it's, it's not working at all. Drake London with a couple of touchdowns. It's nice to see. You know, it, it's always been somebody. You know, Bijan's had a big game this year. Kyle Pitts has had a couple of big games. Now Drake London having a big game. Kind of been waiting on that one. And now we need uh, Bijan to find some more space to run. 10 rushes for 20 yards. Not saying it's his fault, but it is unacceptable as a team. It's a big part of our identity is running the football. And we have been unable to do that today. And we're going to keep trying. But when you have a rookie left guard, they're not engaging with the one player he needs to block. What do you think's going to happen? Third and ten. We're throwing a Madsen. I, I pressed the button for literally a, like, a millisecond. It, why is it a bullet pass? I'm not saying it would have been completed, dude. I'm pressing it for no amount of time. I know you have to tap the button. To get a touch pass. If you want a lob pass, you have to fucking sneeze on the thing. You have to hit it so lightly, or else it will never do what you want it to do. This new passing is so stupid. We're blitzing. Young just throws it away. We're forcing him to make mistakes, but we're not getting the results that I want, which is a tackle for loss with Troy Anderson. A sack would work. A pick would work. Some of those things are a little bit harder to control. Miss Anderson can't make the tackle. Third and two now. This will be a really interesting play. It is a run to Miles Sanders. A.J. Terrell can't wrap up. There's Jesse Bates. I'll tell you what's frustrating is Troy Anderson ends up coming in to make the assisted tackle. What's really frustrating is I did not have control of Troy Anderson here. I tried to crash down instantly. He fucking drops back into coverage. Why? I am holding down, and it's like, well... We don't really feel like that's what you want to do. Let me do whatever I want. If I want to sprint back in man coverage and go to the sideline, it would let me. But I can't crash down and make a play on the ball carrier. Absolutely brain dead. Richie Grant. Force him out. Nope. Miles Sanders continues his big day. That's good. It's Jesus. Now it's Chuba Hubbard. First carry of the game for him goes for 25. We just lost the edge. All right, I have Troy Anderson now in at the mic. I think we're going to have a better chance shooting some gaps here. Making plays. There he is, and he can't wrap up. Sanders trucking everybody. Gets eight. Troy Anderson was right there. We just needed a little bit of help to make sure that he actually went to the ground. 
Oh man, three and a half minutes to play. Panthers looking to take the lead. Here's a pitch, get outside. Richie Grant can't wrap up. Terrell's there. Third and two for Carolina. Oh my goodness, man. It's like tackling prime Marshawn Lynch. Run the ball to him again. Troy Anderson's gonna light his ass up. Come on, Troy. They're actually gonna throw. Quick slant, incomplete. Terrell's right there. Andrew Norwell injured on the play. And now on fourth and two, the Panthers will play conservatively and just take the lead. Go up by three with three minutes to go. Would I do the same? I don't know, man, it's fourth and two. I probably would just to get that lead, but it's not like their defense has been amazing today. They've made a couple plays, sure. But I don't know, that's a, that's a tough call. My thought process is that if you don't get it, the opposing team is backed up so deep into their own end zone, it totally minimizes the playbook. And when your run D has been so good anyway, and you're forcing us pretty much to run the football from our own five, we're lower, right? Like I feel, and this is a feel thing, but I feel like you probably stand a pretty good chance to just force an immediate punt. Let's see what we can do on offense though. There's blocking, there's Bijan. So who knows if that would have happened inside our own 10. But we get to the 35 here after the field goal. Just over two minutes to play. I feel like this is a perfect time to try and rip them off play action. Linebackers kind of stand flat-footed, but don't really do anything too bad. And we can't find Madsen. There's Kyle Pitts. Outrun somebody. That should be a first down. There's a two-minute warning. And it'll be first and 10 from the 46. We're being methodical here. We don't need a touchdown, but a touchdown would be nice. Check down to Bijan, just take the yardage. Whatever, it's a yard, that's fine. If we had <laughs> just 10 more of those and we get a first down, wow. Second and nine, we're gonna try Bijan again. This is a little bit risky, but sometimes you have to risk it for the payoff, which is not the expression, but it, it does work. First and 10, Bijan moves the chains again. I feel like we just should play this conservatively. We we need to tie the game. And they're playing the run hard. Why? It should be easy yardage. Instead, it's going to be second and 12. Just over 50 seconds to play now. We need to move the chains. Donovan Peoples-Jones. Box him out! Can't come down with it. What's the range? We got to get to the 41 for Koo. And we know we're going to get iced as well. They want us to run verticals again. It really didn't work that well last time. Try tight end corner. We are close to that line. We are close. Just not quite there. Hopefully Madsen clears out the middle and we can just throw it to Bijan Robinson. Madsen was open enough and we can't get it to him. <sighs> Shoot. And now they have full momentum. We probably just made that decision a touch late. That's what it comes down to. And now... If we don't get the first down, the game isn't over, but it, it looks really, really bad for us. We're gonna throw the tight end. Madsen, he can't come down with it. I really thought he was just gonna outrun his matchup. It's pretty much what I thought. Didn't end up happening. Anyone else get open? See, Bijan I had running a little Texas route, a little angle out of the backfield. He ends up chipping, which means he never gets into his break by the time the football's out, right? We're already choosing the throw. London maybe had a better chance. Like, we were already under pressure, so this ball had to come out. I just, I really felt like Madsen was going to take this inside lane and just have, have space right here up the middle. Just good defense, I guess, by Jeremy Chin. Madsen can't come down with it. Ah, okay. We have three timeouts. It will be an uphill battle to win this game. That is for sure. But we know they're pretty much going to run the football. It's not a bad start. We can stop the clock three full times. There's number one. And we are just going to keep run committing. It, it's got to be runs for them. It has to be. Oh, they kind of changed direction there. There's John Graves with the tackle for loss. Third and nine. Now, here's the problem. At this point, they don't have to still run. So I'm a little bit worried about a run commit. Play the outside. Anderson, great tackle timeout. 
I don't know if that counts as TFL. It was no gain. We'll see if it was close enough, but 25 seconds. We'll get the football back. We need a big return. That's not a great punt. That's a really, really bad punt. We're going to have a chance here. 21 seconds. I'd love to get out of bounds. How do we pick this up? Uh, it, it's just going to be really hard. We need about 25 yards. And I know I'm going to be rolling out. It, we got to get the ball in the hands of Kyle Pitts somehow. That's pretty much what it'll come down to. Quick throw outside to Bijan. Guaranteed yardage takes almost no time. And they're spreading this out so much. I don't really like this. We're going to roll out with Ritter. And we are nearly sacked. I mean, should have probably just got the football in the air there. There's Madsen. We have Madsen! The rookie tight end out of Utah gets us in field goal range! Neil Madsen wins on the corner route. Let's take another look because this is magic from Madsen. I mean, Shaq Thompson, I guess, was tasked with man coverage. That safety buzzed down. Donovan Peoples-Jones on the clear out. That safety was going to take away Drake London. So all Ritter had to do was throw it into the open field. DPJ with the great clear out. And Shaq Thompson just does not have the speed to catch up to Madsen. Vertical threat tight end. Our first pick in the draft. And he gets us in a field goal range to potentially tie this game. 41 yarder. We're going to be iced. Here's the kick to tie the game. It is up. It is no good. Young Wei Ku has missed, and we're going to lose the game. Uh, it's devastating. I lined it up perfectly. I even accounted. I pushed it. I pushed it so slightly to the left, like so, so, so slightly off center, to account for the six mile per hour wind in our dome stadium here. And I just, I must have missed the timer on the downswing when they hide the meter. Oh, God, that's devastating. I know it's such a Bengal loss, dude. I know it is. Oh, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to just, I want to live in fairy tale land where everything's only good to me. Uh, what does that even mean? Oh, God, I don't know. I don't like it. The ice kicks, dude. I hate them. I hate the ice kicks. I got a great kicker trying to make a 41-yarder to tie it. Misses. Oh, why do they take my meter away? I can't see what I'm doing. Why am I? Why do they make me be blind when I'm kicking? Oh, I don't even know what I'm saying, dude. I sound freaking delirious. Ritter has a great game. 21 of 31 for 330. Two touchdowns, no picks. We intercept Bryce Young and we lose. Allowed 130 on the ground to Miles Sanders. Couple of touchdowns. Bijan, I mean, I don't know what I can even say about this. 13 carries for 31 yards. We couldn't get anything. Receiving, Pitts goes 6 for 99. Bijan, 6 for 69. Nice. Over 100 for Drake London. Two touchdowns. Madsen with a huge catch at the end there. He had 3 for 48. Pretty nice game for him. Devastating loss. Three TFLs for Thompson. And I do not see Troy Anderson there. Graves with one. Grady Jarrett, Caden Ellis, but no Troy Anderson. We did not sack him. Got a, got a pick for Terrell. That was cool. Deflection for Richie Grant. I don't think we're going to come out of this with any depth trade upgrades at all. That is devastating. So just to recap, because who doesn't love a recap? We had the opportunity for not one, but two dev trade upgrades, got neither of them, and lost the game. So, congratulations, we didn't accomplish anything. I mean, just, just unbelievable. It's pretty much all there is to say. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, I don't know, Troy, man. It wasn't your day. I know you're trying to blame it on everybody else but yourself, but it wasn't your day. And Richie Grant, we knew he wasn't going to do anything. That was never going to happen. Just, uh... Just one of those games, man. One of those games.
We have those weeks from time to time. It's just classic Falcons franchise, classic Bengal franchise series. We do have a breakout challenge next episode. I'm thinking that might be Drake London. Big game. He could be going up. On the bright side, Jeff Okuda and Cordero Patterson are that much closer to returning. Jeff Okuda in particular, we really could have used in this game. Uh, would have done a better job against Adam Thielen and Terrace Marshall. I think I would tell you that for free. But that'll do it for this episode. Not the result we wanted. It happens. That's football. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.